Welcome to Meditations and Prayer number 21, Kabbalah and Chassidus Explained, number 46. So the famous uh, doctor, psychotherapist, Viktor Frankl said that a man or woman's deepest desire in life is to find a meaning in life. If he or she can find that meaning, he or she can survive anything. He also spoke about the ultimate meaning. He said that a man of faith in a creator can have the ultimate meaning, which is an awareness of a task giver, the divine creator that gives a task to the human being. You imagine the creator of the universe, the creator of man himself, gives man a task, a purpose, a meaning. How infinitely meaningful is that? So I believe that that is connected with today's class, which is, we are in the middle of Avas Oilam, which is the blessing in the, in the morning prayer before the Shema that could be found in the blue Chabad Sedurim um, during the week prayers at page 41 and Shabbos prayers, page 206, the same prayer. So we are holding at the words, almost at the beginning, but a little bit after the beginning, What I'm actually using right now is a Siddur with uh, Hasidus explanations, written by Rabbi Kaplan, a pretty, pretty powerful book. So for this class, we'll be using the, this translation. Our Father, our King, for the sake of your great name and for the sake of our ancestors who trusted in you, whom you taught life-giving laws, life-giving laws by which to fulfill your will wholeheartedly, be likewise gracious to us and instruct us. So basically for the sake, the merit of our ancestors, you taught them Chukechayim, you taught them life-giving laws. So teach us as well, inspire us as well. I want to bring from the book Hayom Yom on the words Chukechayim. It's an interesting expression, which I think is very rare in the prayer book. You taught them the rules of life, but the translation here is the life-giving laws. The life-giving laws. So in Hayom Yom 22, Shvat, he says like this. There are two kinds of laws. Laws that generate life and laws that result from life. In other words, what, what causes what? Do the laws cause life or life cause the laws? How does he translate here? Life-giving laws. Man-made laws result from life. That is why they, dif they differ in every country each according to its local circumstances. God Almighty's Torah is the divine law that generates life. The law that generates life, it's the Torah of truth, the same in all places, and at all times the Torah is eternal. So the Torah generates life. The, the reason why we listen to the Torah is not because that's what life dictates, that's what the Torah dictates. Torah actually was the is the blueprint of creation, the blueprint of creation. So um, how fortunate would someone be able to, to follow the laws of the blueprint of his own creation? <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to comment on that. Chukechaim, life-giving laws. Avinu Avarachman, our Father, our merciful Father, our Father of mercy. Our Father, merciful Father, who shows mercy, have mercy upon us and implant understanding in our hearts. Usually we understand with our heads. What does it mean? Vesin bili beinu bino. Implant understanding in our hearts that what we understand should actually inspire our hearts. Lahovinu lahaskil, so that we may lovingly comprehend and perceive. Lishmoya, listen, lumidolamid, learn and teach. And observe, perform, and maintain all the words of the teachings of your Torah. What does this mean? How does the word listen come in here? Give understanding in our hearts to understand, per comprehend, perceive, and listen. First you have to listen. Then you could understand what you're listening. Then you could be inspired 
from what you are listening. Why does listening come after understanding, right? That's like, that's not in the right order. First you listen, you hear, and then you understand it. But here it says, no, the same bilabino bino lahovin lahaskilishmoya. Give understanding in our hearts, so we should listen. So, so I have, uh, there is a, a concept. I'm going to see how he translates this here. It says to perceive, to perceive. Okay, I like that translation better. So there's a concept. It's originally a concept in Yiddish, but our Rebbe's expounded, especially the previous Rebbe, expounds on this in different places. There's Heren and there's Der Heren. It's very hard to translate it. Heren means hearing, listening. And then this dead heron means emotionally listening, like wholeheartedly listening. So I'm going to quote here from two places. The Kutu de Burim, the Kutu de Burim, chapter 3 4, page 15, I'm sorry, 515, 515, 515. Heron, dead herons, and Seba is under Heron and dead heron are to- two different concepts. Heron hearing means. Like, by the way, yeah, I heard what you said, right? Or like people say, it went in one ear, went out the other, but I heard it. It means that although the person heard, it didn't have an effect on him. The person stayed exactly the same. Dead hand means that the thing that he hears has an effect. He is, it, 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 it inspires him. Okay. Tavshin Ches, Sefer Hamarim Tavshin Ches, actually in a page 252. Dead hand is totally different. When the ear listens, it brings the concept that the person hears into all of his limbs. It permeates the person. Dead means the person feels it and is inspired by, inspired by it, is uplifted by it, is touched, is moved, moved by what he hears. That's dead head. So perhaps that's what it means here. Oh, and we have a yom yom. We have another Hayyam Yom of 12 of Cheshvan that the Alter Rebbe translated Shema Yisrael, Hero Israel, Aider Hert, Aider Hert. And here he translates, a Jew hears deeply. So we have the concept of Shema, here's Lishmoya, and here's Shema, it's the same root. Shema Yisrael doesn't just mean hear, it means hear deeply, uh, be moved by what you hear. Be touched, uplifted, inspired. Hayim Yem, 12 Cheshun. Okay, now let's talk about a little bit about this mercy. This It begins, this, this verse, this uh, blessing begins with God Almighty, uh, uh, it begins, our Father, our merciful Father that has mercy, please have mercy upon us. The word mercy, in these words we just learned, says four times. Sorry, three times. Of Vino, our Father. Of Harachman, the Father of mercy. Hamarachim, that has mercy. Rachim na'aleinu, please have mercy upon us. Very uh, emphasizing the concept, the concept of mercy. Three times mentioned here, excuse me. So, so we have here in the Kutta Teda, Pasha Sre'e, the Kutta Teda, Pasha Sre'e, um, page 25b. Uh, so here it says like this. What does it say? Avinu Varachim. This is what we say. Avinu Varachim. We just said, our Father, our merciful Father, have mercy upon us. Is because we people, human beings, we are here in this physical world, in this material world. <coughs> Excuse me. We are far from Hashem's light, from the truth of reality, of godliness. So, so in other words, we are we are in this physical, material world. Excuse the music. Hope it passes shortly. Um, so we that we are in the material world. We we don't really understand the extent of the pity upon us of our soul. Our soul is literally. Literally, a part of God Almighty, uh, 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 a splinter of, of godliness, uh, 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 a spark of godliness. Splinter, splinter is a little bit uh, too materialistic to, to say, but a, a spark definitely. a divine spark, 
It's part of God. It's literally part of God Almighty. And so, and so that, and then the, the clothes in a body, in a, in a material body, with material pursuits, with material lusts, with with all different things that that limit this soul of its expression could really express itself of its relationship with God Almighty, with its love to God Almighty, its connection with God Almighty, its yearning to God Almighty. All these things are very much dimmed once it comes into the body. So. So it's a pity. It's a pity. It's a rechmona, say you say in Yiddish. It's, it's, there's a lot of compassion to have on the soul that comes into the body that cannot express itself uh, uh, the way it should, by far, much less than when the soul is without a body. So, so, but we, we are in the material world, so we are, to a large extent, numb. We don't feel this compassion. This pity. who is Baruch, but he, the blessed one, be he. He knows it. He knows the he knows the Rachmanis. He knows the great pity that's on the, on the soul that that uh, that came from such a high place to our physical material world, and it distanced itself very much from godliness. So therefore, it's God Almighty that really feels and knows the pity on our souls. That's why we say Baruch Rabim. We say that earlier. We had a class on that too. But um, how do we say it here? You, our, 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 our Father, our merciful Father, you have pity on us. And why you? Because you really understand the pity. You really understand, you have compassion on us. Because you could really feel the pity upon our soul. Therefore, you have compassion on us. And give us understanding uh, and 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 and. and uh, Understanding in our hearts to, to, to know your Torah, to understand the real meaning in life, not to be lost, and to really stay focused on what life, life is for, how you explain this in the Torah. I want to conclude, I want to conclude with um, a melody, a melody, a nigun, a very special nigun. Um, it's called Reb Michal Zlachever's nigun. Why? Because it also had, the Baal Shem Tev called it the Eidu Sarachim Rav nigun. The awakening of much mercy nigun melody, and that's what we're talking about. That's what we are uh, praying about. If I'm not mistaken, I've heard of, uh, and I haven't heard it directly, but I heard that Chassidim, great Chassidim, used to sing sometimes this nigun or part of this nigun by this, by this uh, blessing. If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> okay, so we have here in Sefer Nigunim, chapter one, the book of melodies. Nigunim Chabad. It doesn't say Nigunim Chabad, but it's uh, vast majority is Nigunim Chabad. Nigunim Chsid is Chabad. Nigunim Chsid is Chabad. Chabad Melodies, um, Part One. So on page forty-eight, we have like this: the, the, the previous Rebbe is writing that his father, the Rebbe Rashab, said that we have a tradition that this Nigun. Val Shemtev called this Eidos Rachem Rabbi Nigun, as I just said, the awakening of much mercy. Melody. And this melody, my father, the Rebbe Marash, meaning the Rebbe Rashab, the, the fifth Rebbe is telling this to the sixth Rebbe, that his father, the fourth Rebbe, said that it's a Kabbalah, it's a tradition that he received from his father, the Semach Sedek, the third Chabad Rebbe, in the name of the Alter Rebbe, the first Chabad Rebbe, that he received from his Rebbe, the Magdim of Rich, that was present when the Basham Tev said before. He, he, the Hashem to return his soul to his maker, he said that they should sing this nigin that the Michal Mizlochev composed. And when they finished singing the nigin, the Hashem to said, I assure you that when and where and who, meaning whenever, wh- wherever, whoever, will, um, I'm translating it uh, directly, meaning whenever, wherever, whoever, will sing this this awakening of much mercy song melody with a tshuva eros, with the awakening of tshuva of wanting to return closer to Hashem so in whatever place I will be in, in Gan Eden I will hear it because there are angels that bring tidings and messages to souls and I will sing along I will also sing along and awaken much 
compassion over these Bali Tshuva, over these people that do Tshuva, that want to return to Hashem, to God Almighty, while they sing the song. The Bali Tshuva Zinger. These Bali Tshuva singers of the songs, of the song. <clears throat> Hai la ra ya la ya ya la ra 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 ya da ya la ra. No words, only tune. Hai la ra ya la ya la ra 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 ya la ra. Ah, 